Hello and welcome to the new and improved Biopsych website. My name is Alexander Shearer from SRI's Bioinformatics Research Group and in this webinar series we'll be introducing you to our updated, easier to use, more powerful version of the Biopsych website, including an overview of the information we include, how we display it, and the many tools available to help you find what you need. In this first part of the webinar series we're just going to give you a very high level overview of what's in Biopsych and what you can do with it. Right now we're looking at the Biopsych home page. Biopsych is a collection of model organism databases for hundreds of organisms that are accessible via the web. You can actually also download flat files containing the same data or even download the Pathway Tools software for local use. Pathway Tools is the software that our group has designed that generates and maintains these databases. You can actually go over to the left side here and click on this Pathway Tools software link to learn more about downloading the data files or the software for your own use. When you look at the Biosite collection on the web, you're looking at a collection of pathway genome databases, basically model organism databases. Let's scroll down and take a closer look. The Biosite collection is divided into three tiers. Up here, in Tier 1, we have intensively curated databases that have been subject to a tremendous amount of manual curation by trained scientists. Our two Tier 1 databases are the EcoPsych and MetaPsych databases. EcoPsych is a comprehensive database of E. coli K-12 biology with information from 17,000 publications. MetaPsych is a multi-organism metabolic pathway and enzyme database that collects over 1,200 metabolic pathways from 1,500 organisms and 19,000 publications. Down in Tier 2, we have computationally derived databases that have had some moderate uh, human intervention. And we have 20 databases in Tier 2. You can click through on your own time and see what we have available there. Then in Tier 3, we have databases that were computationally derived solely using the Pathway Tools software package. And you can learn more about that by looking at our link that I showed above or by following our webinar on how to generate your own database. In this release, we have about 350 Tier 3 databases. These databases have undergone no curation. So what this means is we took an annotated genome and we fed it through the Pathway Tools software package and it generated a model organism database with genes and reactions and it inferred a, the presence of certain pathways and additional reactions and made a ready-to-use computationally predicted database for that organism. As always, we're happy to have these databases adopted by individual groups who have a specific interest in a certain organism. If you think your group would like to adopt a database and adapt it and curate it and make it serve your user community a little better, you can click on our link here where it says more following the word adoption and learn about how to adopt a database, how we'll help get you set up with that, and how you can run a database for your own personal use or even as a web server for your community. And if we don't have a genome yet that you'd like to have in database form, we can also guide you through the process of building one yourself. So let's go back up to the top of the page. The means by which you'll use the Biopsych start page or any page to navigate around the rest of Biopsych is what's in this top bar up here. Up here you have a way to customize the site to serve your needs and a series of menus that will let you navigate around. Let's start with a little bit of customization. Over here on the right we have a login option. This is where you can make your own account on Biopsych and you can log in and there's an explanation of why you might want to log in if you mouse over and click on why log in. When you're logged into the site you have the option of setting preferences for how you view the site. You have the option of setting a preferred starting organism. By default we start people on E. coli because we have EcoPsych. But if you're working on a specific organism and you always want to start on that organism or you always want to have that be your default search organism then you can set that as a, as a preference. And we plan on adding future customization features that will let you do various things. We're open to requests, so do feel free to contact us about that. So what else is on the page header? Well, obviously we have this search bar up here, quick search, that tells you that you're looking in E. coli K12. And in fact, any of the searches you do right now are going to be in this E. coli K12, which is your current organism. I'll talk more about the search and that later. Over here, you also have this home button that lets you pick one of our major databases, Biopsych, EcoPsych, 
MetaPsych, and HumanPsych. You have a search button, which gives you a range of search options, which I'll talk about in the next section. You have a tools button, which takes you to our various viewing and comparison tools, some of which we'll talk about in this webinar. And then you have a help button that takes you to a host of useful help files, including our BioPsych guide, a glossary of terms, publications relating to BioPsych, and other material that will help you get the most out of BioPsych. So that's the basic structure of the database. You have the start point, we have the tier 1, 2, and 3 databases. We have all these search and other related menus on the top. And so that's where we're going to go in part 2 of this webinar series. We're going to learn about searching. So I encourage you, come back, watch part 2, and learn how to search within the BioPsych family of databases.